All right, now I'm doing a test to see if I put the audio in. Can you hear that? Can you hear my voice? Let me know if you can hear my voice. Yeah, you can hear me? Oh, glorious. Of course, now it's echoing in my headphones. Hello? Hello? Hello. All right, we're just going to do a, uh, hello. Okay, here we go. Music is still going. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, I, I, uh, inserted the vocal mic onto the starting soon slideshow just to test it before I get into the full thing. Yeah, I know you can hear me. It's because I'm using my sensitive uh, condenser microphone. Not uh, don't have one of those fancy podcasting microphones yet. All right, here we go. Take three. So what's up, all you cats and kittens? This is your dog Nate Dog here, back with another exciting episode of This Is Art Show, the only show with a fictional host who is pretending to be a real artist. You can tell I'm a real artist because I'm wearing an apron that says Nathan Sherrod is a legitimate artist. Also, this pin says I know what I'm talking about. Words don't lie. Don't forget to smash that like, hit me up with a follow on Twitch, and spread the word that ATL is art. And stay tuned till after the virtual artist talk. I'm going to let you know how you can get some free art. So, all right, today we're going to be looking at that hotshot artist just blowing people's minds and stepping on gray matter all over the place, Nathan Sherritt, a.k.a. the Nate Dog, a.k.a. King of Contrast, a.k.a. the killer of Mr. Pennybody, a.k.a. me. For our first virtual artist talk, I'm going to take a quick tour through my public portfolio, so that's NathanSherritt.com. If you are here, you know how to spell my name. Go check it out if you want to follow along or just uh, watch on the stream, though. You might uh, get better pictures if you follow along uh, in a separate tab. All right, so then you, dear viewer, can tell me in the comments what artwork or body of work you want to know more about, and I'll consider making that the next VAT based on how many votes each thing gets. So whatever uh, artwork you like, just let me know in the chat. If you're on Facebook, put it in the comments. If you're in Twitch and watching it live, put it in the chat. If you are on Twitch watching it later or on, uh, YouTube. So on Twitch, put it on the suggestion box. All right. So let's get to it so I can stop talking like a knucklehead. Just kidding. I will never stop talking like a knucklehead. All right, here we go. So, this is going to be, as the first VAT virtual artist talk, we're going to go and start in the beginning. So this is my website, NathanSherritt.com. It's very exciting. I like gray and color. All right, so we're going to go back in time. I'm going to just do a real quick sort of stream through of my work and then uh, try to see what you like. All right, and then whichever ones get the most votes, I will do the next more in-depth VAT virtual artist talk about that. So here we go. Starting up in the upper left, we've got construction obstruction. This was a fun project I did out in the Hambage, uh, North Georgia woods. I uh, was basically naked except for work boots, work gloves, and this bizarro and sculpture on my head. And then I was performing construction park uh, projects in the woods. So I'm not going to click on that because this is a family show. We'll go moving over to Inspiration for Moderns. So this was after I had just done my uh, big, uh, what you call it, dashboard show. I doubt what you're doing, but when you're down in the tiny box, the audio and video aren't quite in sync. 
Oh, that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with that, and I'll figure that out later. Thank you for letting me know, chat. All right, so these are some of my favorite pop songs of 2012. We got some Katy Perry. We got some whoever this band was that said, We Can Burn Brighter Than the Sun. Uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, Robin. Who's doing the I'm Going In For A Kill song? Uh, Rue Routes? I forget her name. Jonathan Colton. Um, now you're just somebody that uh, earworm Gautier song. Adele. Uh, Bruno Mars. Uh, Kelly Clarkson. Oh man, so many good ones. Uh, what's this one? Carly Rae Jepsen. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So these were all exhibited at Kylan Art. All right, let's head back. Maybe, maybe. All right, we're going to skip some of the less visual ones. Let's go down to Musical Landscape. This one was pretty fun. This was a project I did for the Art on the Atlanta Beltline in which I wanted to make a xylophone that matched the skyline of Atlanta. So this was down in, I believe, Piedmont Park. And when you stood in a certain spot, all the notes... Yes, LaRue. Thank you, Mr. Zachary Shaw. LaRue did In for the Kill. So on Musical Landscape, all the notes were defined by the landscape itself. So the lengths of each of these, uh, what's called an idiophone, basically a xylophone, um, is dependent on the scenery and the landscape that it, it occupies. So I just wanted to get something that was really kind of reminiscent of slapping a stick against a fence when you're a kid, you know, or adult, and just smacking them. Smack, smack. All right. Let's see if we can get this to go backwards. We are bloodbrothers.com. This is one of my, this is actually my very first performance art piece. And never mind, we're not going to go there because apparently I killed the site. That's good to know. But uh, I'll do, I'm, I'll probably for sure do a um, Blood Brothers episode uh, if I can get this to go backwards. Come on, you. Wow, this really does not want to help me out here. Let's see, just select previous tab. There we go. All right, lovely. Smacking that stick. That's right, Glenda. All right, um, let's go into and breathing together. So this is 2010. So this is like um, this is when I was still studying animation and just sort of dabbling in the sculptures. I got really interested in this idea of the conjunction and the A and D. That's also what you saw up in the um, construction obstruction site. So this was a video performance and also a sculpture in which I put a prosthetic A and D uh, skin prosthetic kind of like special effects thing on my back and I spoke into a microphone saying the word and for as long as my lungs could handle it just stretching it all out uh, all right that one was fun 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 let's go you can hear the chicken nuggets getting ready in the background mm -mm -mm. And let's go to this exhibition, A Series of Controlled Environments, 2009. So also in my undergrad at SCAD. So I had a couple pieces here. One of these was uh, right, basically this just took up the entire length of the entrance to the show in the upper left here. So it's called OK, question mark, half. Uh, you had a red carpet that led all the way up to it, and then people would either walk on the art or they would have to disobey the... Uh, do not step here announcement, which was on both sides. So either don't touch the art or disobey the orders. So it was a nice little um, contradiction. 
All right, here we go. So this teddy bear, I don't even remember what his name is, but I found this teddy bear. Oh, a teddy bear for hugging and stabbing. That's what it was called. Um, and this was right when we had moved down to Atlanta. So I had just met Mona's dad who uh, works as an ER doctor and uh, works in an urgent care clinic. And so I asked him if I could hijack their x-ray machine. So I inserted over 500 needles into this fluffy looking teddy bear and then we took an x-ray of it and installed them right in front. And every day I combed the bear's hair so it was all nice and flat and lovely. And then at the end of every day there were pokes and marks and things because people don't believe me. I told you, it's got needles in there. All right, box for telling secrets. This was just a nice little like exercise I did for box making. And then I turned it into this kind of secret machine that never really kept any secrets because it was embedded with really strong neodymium magnets that repelled so you could never actually close the box fully. And then once you told your secret, it was never able to be contained again. Let's see, what the hell are you going to do? This was one of my first actual artworks that I did in New York City when I was still living there. Um, again, studying animation, so not really like thinking about myself as an artist artist and I just got really frustrated and was trying to with myself and trying to figure out what I was going to do and what I could do and so I just decided to trust myself because I've been going through this period where everything I was thinking I'd tell people about and then they'd get uh what would they, they'd be like oh that's a stupid idea or something and then I listened to them um and so I went through and just got a bunch of these tiny little panels that you know are cheapo at the art store. I laid out this whole text, what the hell are you going to do? And then I put it on the floor and then also let people mix and match as a kind of puzzle, uh, as an invitation. So that's that. Uh, this little wire guy, I ended up selling him to a collector pretty close after this show, but this was just a nice abstract wall piece that I enjoyed. All right, let's uh, get back to the main page if it will rewind for me oh this is another fun one see my early ones were really kind of like out there i was just going for all sorts of bizarro weird things that pop into your head and you're like what about this so this one's called it's all my fault so i was thinking about the idea of responsibility and taking responsibility for someone else's problem. So we took, uh, I took a bunch of clothes that we were donating and I also asked for clothes for, for donations from others. And I had these custom labels made with cute little bunny and baby blue and it says it's all my fault. So somebody would come into the thrift store, purchase any of these items and I would just metacosmically Mm, take on their responsibilities in a sort of poetic way. That's my lovely wife, Mona. Let's get back. Getting back to the archive. Ooh, this is another one of my really, really early ones. This is like 2004. So, yeah, I was taking a color printing class at the Center for Photography, International Center for Photography in New York City. And I, this was like when Holga's and all that lumography and stuff started coming around. So I took photographs of my family. I remember reading this article, an interview with Stephen King, where somebody asked him, you know, you've got, seemed to have got this, this normal family that's lovely and, and everything's so cool and, and calm and not horrifying. So how can you write all these horrifying things? And he said that he wrote them to, so that they wouldn't happen. So I thought that was kind of an interesting take on the, on the matter. So I decided to create my own protective mantras and protective mandalas. And then I, um, coated my siblings and family in fake blood and gave them tools of my father. So my father is a constructor and a builder and, um, you know, all of these things are, are things that he uses in his daily tool life. And then it kind of struck a chord with him because he really did not want to get covered in blood. He got real nervous about that. So dad keeps his hands in his pockets. So that's what this one's called. Dad keeps his hands in his pockets. 
I love this one. I got these and I hand printed and hand retouched all of these. Um, they're about 15 by 15 with a few smaller prints that I gave to my family and they never put up. I wonder why. All right, let's go back to the main page. Yeah, Glenda Glamazon, she remembers those photos. Yeah, because we were probably still working at the magazine at that time, weren't we? Um, all right, let's, uh, anybody want to pick what's next? Tell me what you want me to look at next, and I'll do a quick, quick run through. Too late. I'm picking Enjoy the Show. See, that was me tricking you into putting something in the chat. I'm very devious like that. All right, so Enjoy the Show was a mixed media installation that I did for Dashboard Co-op when it was still called Dashboard Co-op. They're a pretty big arts organization now, and, and the, I worked with them from very early on. So there's videos here if you want to go look at it. But this was essentially about, again, responsibility, taking responsibility, making choices, and taking responsibility for your choices. Um, but also what's the, what's the barrier between public and private? So people would come in to this dark room, they'd see two streams, animated sex and animated violence, and they get to look at whichever one they wanted. Then they passed through a curtain and came into a lovely living room where they realized they were on TV the entire time. Wah, wah. All right. That one's a fun one. Yeah, I am a trickster. Dos, dos Drasus. Man, why you, why you all get such crazy names? See, I just don't have any imagination, so I just put my name on there. Um, all right, next we're going into True Stories. These are probably my favorite series of all time. I wanted to think about the idea of leaving a legacy or leaving a mark, so... I cast in stainless steel all of these really weird sounding true stories that seem like they're probably false but are actually absolutely true. Things like Jack Bauer giving me a lap dance for my 30th birthday or not getting signed to a major label twice. Um, and Kristen Bell absolutely did not hit on me at the 2007 Video Game Awards, although Dave Navarro did hit on her. I was an orphan for 10 minutes. This is kind of the crux artwork of everything I do. Oh yeah, Glenda was there for the lap dance. Heck yeah, see? Pixar didn't happen. We got it in chat. She says it was there. Um, this I'll get into in a later art uh, talk, but this is really kind of my the crux of everything that I do. It's the well that I draw from. And then this was my only 9-11 piece. Being a 9-11, I was uh, on a subway train one stop before the World Trade Center and freaking out like everybody. We were stuck on the train for hours until somebody, an MTA worker, came in and said, they're gone, they're gone, and everybody had to get out. And as we got out, this was right at the Brooklyn Bridge, so right across the river, uh, I could see the smoke and the fires um, of the towers, and all of the ashes were falling on us, and we just had to walk home. So I etched a small falling man. I remember the falling man was, was in the news a lot at that time, one of the photographs. So... I don't know. Yeah, the 9-11 gets, still gets me. My clown name is Scribbles. Okay. That's another story. See? True stories. True stories. Ah, oh, these are cool. Thank you, Dostrasis. I hope I pronounced your name right. Dostrasis? Dostrasis? Um, you definitely need to do an in-depth thing on the open piece. All right, that's, uh, there's a vote for that. So let's look in. This is all my work. This is another thing I was thinking about in terms of responsibility, ownership, like how do we own ideas? How do we own the things that we do? What happens when we repeat something? Like is, is there, you know, uh, any kind of, I don't know, like sense to this idea of originality? Like is it actually, is it real? So uh, Andy Warhol at one point took these Polaroids with him with a skull and then he took another one with Basquiat and... I had a friend who was another amazing, amazing artist named Nikita Gale, and I wanted to do a collaboration with her, so I asked her if I could like take any of her artworks, appropriate them, and then turn them into new artworks, and she gave me carte blanche. So I picked these two where she wrote, Andy, your point, and then she wrote, same old shit. So these were on originally on photographs. So then I took these photographs, I redrew them in the computer, 
uh, in Adobe Illustrator, and then I use the processes of Illustrator to align everything to center. So uh, all of these individual pieces then got aligned to center. And uh, then I had robots draw. This is one of my earlier pieces where I was working with robot drawing tools. I use them all the time now. So each of these is drawn with a pen, but by a robot drawing with a pen. All right, let's go back again. I got another piece for Jason Kofke too. Jason Kofke is another one of my favorite artists in Atlanta, and he does this piece called Everything's Going to Be Okay, and I changed it to Everything's Going to Be All Right, but it's not up here. Let's see. We could go into Come Inside Me. This is definitely going to have to be fast and going to have to be its own thing. So this is the piece that I was talking about in the installation that I was talking about that was really emotional right before I did the pop song lyrics. Um, it dealt with my grandmother's death from COPD. And each room in this house that I did with Dashboard in Peoplestown in Georgia, Atlanta, um, related to growing up and family and family relations and your sense of identity within that family. Um, welcome, I love that, Matt. Uh, dealing with uh, ideas about biology versus construction. Since I'm half adopted, that's where the uh, this is. I was an orphan for ten minutes comes from. So that's a glorious one. I love that one. But that's that that one could do a whole whole piece on each each room in there. Um, but that was a great show. I loved it. It was scary as heck. It was my first solo show, and both uh, it really helped me and Dashboard sort of blow up in the scene a bit during that time. Um, all right, we're going to go into I Did Not Wake Up. This was a little performance piece that I did on the internet. Uh, this was based on some um, correspondence between two of my other favorite artists, on Kawara and John Baldessari. So Kawara would have this practice 